Hey guys, welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. Today I want to show you how I like to print my song mix dance because as you can see I have a lot of outboard equipment here that needs to be recorded in real time in Studio One. It's actual recording instead of rendering and so that requires a bit of a different process than the usual mix down. And over the years I've actually developed a method that I'm using day to day in my mixing and mastering work and I want to show you that right now. So here's one of my older productions that I'm finally finishing up. And like I said, when I'm finishing a song, I like to use a lot of outboard equipment for mixing and mastering. For this piece, I'm using the Console One MK3 by Softube, which is essentially my channel strip. I love the sound of it, had some great results with it lately. And for the final touches, I use the SSL Fusion and the Tegeler Crane right here in my mastering chain. And if you've ever tried to print such a chain or do a mix down with such devices, then you know that comes with its own unique challenges because you can't just render the entire mix offline like you can if you only have plugins in your mix. You have to actually run the mix in real time through these units because they're analog processes, right? And this means that that exporting a song works a little bit differently now. Let me show you. So let's say I was ready to export this song right here. I'm running my analog processing chain through the pipeline plugin, which is absolutely amazing as a hub between the analog and digital domain. I can do all kinds of routing, offset compensation, gain compensation with this. I can take notes of my current settings for mastering. And if you wanna learn all about this plugin, I have my own dedicated video that I'm gonna link you right here. But let's say that I'm ready to export the song. I would set the song start and end markers then here on the marker track. And um, as soon as I've done that, I would go up here to song export mix down like usual. And then very important, you see that the use real time processing checkbox is already ticked here. And this is just enabled by default as soon as the pipeline plugin is inserted because at that point Studio One knows there is a real time processing unit involved and the entire thing has to record like in the good old days. Okay. Then I would do all of my settings. Let's just leave the settings as they are right now. The resolution 16 bit should suffice though. And then I just hit OK. And you can see now the entire process runs in real time, meaning the export process will take as long as the song does. And this gives you a lot of time to reflect on things and contemplate if there couldn't be a more efficient way, especially when you have a big session with a lot of plugins and you suddenly experience a dropout. Usually that's not really a big deal, but when you're using the export real time method from the mix down menu, guess what? You have to start your entire rendering process all over again. And that's another three, four, five, six, seven minutes, depending on how long your song is that you're never getting back. And I thought there must be a better way to work with real-time processes. And that's how I stumbled upon a method that is stunningly simple, but allows you some amazing flexibility, also with automation, as you're going to see in a moment, while committing to something that sounds good to you much faster. And this is what we all want, get our songs done quicker. So let me show you my method that I came up with. So let's assume for a moment that I'm very happy with how some of these sections of the song are sounding, not all of them, but some, and I'd like to capture them exactly as they are and also have them this way later in the finished production, no matter what other settings I dial in as I mix the rest. And usually you would set automations at this point, right? Click the fader and then you hit Option and A on a Mac or Alt and A on Windows just to kind of set the current settings in stone. And then I'm going over to the bridge. Now would be time for me to turn on my fader port and mix this session. And you'll never guess what happens next. Did you see that? The faders jumped back at me to their automation position, of course. So I'm losing all of my freedom when it comes to moving the faders. They will jump back at me as soon as these automations are set. And that is something I wanted to avoid. I just wanted to print the section as it was, commit to it, and then move on to the rest of the mix. And it didn't seem possible at first, but now it is. So you just create a new audio track, make it stereo. And then here under input and output, we need to set a little bit of a different thing here. So we go to the audio IO setup after clicking here on the routing 
And under outputs, we want to create a new output. And you can see I have a ton of analog outputs available here, but even if you have just two for your speakers, that's still enough. Like you won't need an actual additional output to make this work. Okay, we in fact can assign that simply to the same output as the master and let's call that print track or something like that, just so that we know what this is. And then after pressing OK, we can now select a new output for this audio track and this is going to make sense in just a moment here. So instead of choosing the master as output, that's where all the other tracks are going, this particular new audio track that I created is going to the print track instead. And now you might say, Wait, but that's the same actual output as the master. So what's the point? Well, the point is that now with the print track set as the output, we can actually select the master output where all the tracks are going as our input. And usually you cannot do that. Notice how when the master is set as output, I can actually not select it as an input here. And that is because Studio One is assuming a feedback loop and wants to protect our ears. Right? But as soon as I have this dummy output, the print track, now I can suddenly assign the master output as audio track input. And as soon as I record arm this print track that we've created together, I can now record and capture every section exactly as I'm hearing it. So let's assume I'm happy with the verse. There's not going to be any need for these automation points. I just delete them. In fact, let me get rid of all of these automations like so. And now, I can just call this track a print track, go to the section, the start of the section that I want to commit, and now I just hit record. And on this audio track right here, Studio One is recording the mix exactly as it sounds right now. And if there's a glitch, I can just stop the recording and then just resume the recording two bars prior. I can just fix that in the waveform later very easily. So let's say there was a glitch here, just for example's sake, I can just merge the two waveforms like that, okay? And you won't even hear that there's a transition between this event and that one. So that's really perfect. Once I've recorded the entire section, that is just part of my timeline now, indicating that I'm done with this part of the song production. If I want to be able to go back to this particular point, I could just open up the mixer console right here and then add a new scene, or even better, just save this as a new song version under file and save new version. And I could call this verse done in case I need to go back and make any changes. If you want to learn more about how version saving works in Studio One, I also have a video on that in my playlist. I'll link that right here. And then I just hit OK. And now when I go to restore version, I could just get back to my current state to make any changes to the print. So the total recall thing is also not really an issue when using this method. But it's mainly about committing, right? So let's say I'm happy with the verse as it printed right now and I want to move on to the chorus. But in the chorus, I want to have slightly different levels. Maybe I want to have the bass a bit louder than the lead. Maybe I want the lead to be a bit more in the foreground. And now because my faders are not set to read automation mode, they won't snap back at me and I still have all of the creative freedom. I could even make changes as it's recording onto the print track, which gives my song a really organic and alive feel. Best of all, since I'm also mastering on this output, that gets printed into this audio track also. So I'm basically recording a finished product section by section on my timeline here. What's done is done and I can really see how my song is incrementally stepping towards completion. I find that very inspiring because I can see and track my progress in every session now. What I'm happy with is also committed instantly. I don't get tunnel vision as much and my ears don't fatigue as much because everything that sounds good gets captured right away. To export my finished production, my print track here and get it ready for distribution, all I need to do is go to the Files tab of Studio One's browser. There's many ways to do this actually, but this is my favorite one. And then I can simply drag and drop this waveform onto my desktop, for example, from where it's very easy to convert MP3 files and things like that using, for example, the audio batch converter inside of Studio One.
Alternatively, I can also go to the export mix down menu where you always go to. Just keep in mind that you have to disable the pipeline plugin first because otherwise you will still be in real time mode. And then you can just choose the guide or print output as your mix down output. And then the procedure is just like always make an away file, MP3 file, whatever you need. And here's one last tip if you want to make this a part of your workflow in all of your songs, just save this as a track preset. To do that, you just open up the effects browser here in Studio One and all you need to do is drag the print track onto it. This will save it as a track preset and then whenever you're in a new song you can very simply just drag it out and you're ready to record everything. To me this was a game changer in my workflow. Maybe you find this inspiring. Maybe you can take some of this for your own workflow as well. Would be great. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.